Alright, hello everybody, and welcome back to Black Knight Gaming. We are here with episode 4 of our Let's Play series for the Battletech campaign, and last time we took an absolute beating. Our Quick Draw and our Shadow Hawk are still undergoing repairs, and we had to take a significant amount of time and money uh, to make that happen. So we're dropping in on a 1.5 Skull uh, difficulty mission, Ambush Convoy, working with the Pirates in the Highlands. We're bringing along a Centurion, packing an AC-10, two medium lasers, and a small, as well as our return uh, players here, the Vindicator and the Blackjack, as well as our newly acquired Fire Javelin, quad medium laser, reduced jump jets, but up armored, hopefully able to withstand more than one or two little pings before it goes off the field. Uh, with all that intro out of the way, please remember to like, share, and subscribe if you like this content, and uh, we'll have new videos for you guys uh, all the time, so stay, stay in tune. Let's jump right in. Alright, here we are at mission start. We have to stop the convoy from escaping, as well as recon its route. So the recon objective is right up here, and to stop the convoy from escaping, we have to keep them out of this denial zone, all the way over there to the left. And this is going to be a little, a little bit difficult, considering where we dropped in. We are at the middle of this gully. Uh, and in the middle of all of these trees, which slow us down pretty dramatically. Waiting for and, order. You know, genius that I am, I've removed the jump jets from most, although not all, of our mechs. So we'll be jumping with the Got blackjack. Uh, we haven't yet sighted uh, any opponents, which is nice because Good to go. uh, if we do, they'll start moving. And we'll be sprinting Copy through these, uh, these thick trees moving as quickly as we can. Uh, most of the jump jets have come off of the javelin uh, to the point where even though we can jump up out of these trees, with this terrain being what it is, we might actually make more progress just sprinting uh, with our light, which, you know, not ideal. The enemy's turn, we still don't have anyone on contact, and I'm a little bit worried um, that by the time we really get within range, uh, that we'll be really struggling to keep them out of that zone. So the blackjack is going to jump, and it has those really I long distance AC2s. Sure. So we're going to be giving him as much of a height advantage as possible, and using him to get some good vision. Uh, and in fact, we do see them on sensors, uh, no visual contact yet. Reporting enemy contact. These are probably the government, the local government escorts. We are working with the pirates, uh, after all. And I think we're going to go ahead and be a bit gamey, reserve here, and let them come to us um, on uh -huh. initiative two. Reason being, I don't want them to be able to see us. Uh, the Centurion is packing a big gun, an AC-10, but it has to be close range in order to be effective. Uh, so we are going to move up, um, I guess, to here. We're going to stay in the trees. Uh, Archangel does have Bulwark, so we do get that nice defensive bonus. And this is what I was saying uh, during the previous video about the sheer firepower put out by one of these light mechs. We can fire three medium lasers with no heat, four with a little bit of buildup, but because we have relatively poor uh, hit chances. We're just going to fire the three, save the heat for when we have a better a better shot, and put some fire on that other, well, that other javelin, uh, on the 10F. It's the same model that we're fielding. We do take some light damage from that Centurion, and there's another Shadowhawk, and we're, we're going to try and learn from our previous experience uh, fighting Shadowhawks, and we're going to take that mech very very seriously. Uh -huh. So, as tempting as it is with that 85% chance to hit uh, on that fire javelin, I think we might be better off. Well, no. Okay, so we're going to shoot at the fire javelin because Roger we might be Firing within range of the AC-10. Now, he does have bulwark, uh, so he took severely reduced damage from those two AC-2 shots, only 15, which is actually worse than, than even the medium minimal. laser. Actually. Medium lasers and AC-2s do the same Ready for damage, order. it's just a matter of distance and heat. Alright, so we can get within range of this fire javelin with our Centurion, Moving and out. we can start opening up with the big gun. So this was a uh, reward mech from the first campaign mission, and we're going to oh, land that AC-10 shot, looks like maybe left torso or left arm, as well as a scattering of hits with the medium lasers. Yep chewing right through that left torso armor. That's what's wonderful about those torture auto cannons. And we'll be moving up with the Vindicator as well. I wonder, we have a pretty good shot, and we've stripped all of the evasion off of this javelin, which is a light mech, uh, I and does rely on evasion for protection. 
So if we fire in the large laser, which does manage to hit, and we hit one of the mediums as well, uh, we should be able to counter through that javelin relatively quickly. Now, that isn't our ultimate goal. Again, our ultimate goal is to stop the convoy from escaping. Um, and that will be kind of difficult, but I think uh, one of the best ways to do that would be to swing around this right-hand side, get behind the Shadowhawk and the other escort, and come up behind the, the enemy lance. Uh, it's risky, uh, to be sure, but I think we might just be able to pull it off. So we have some good movement with this javelin. Uh, and yes, this is exactly why we only fired three beforehand. So that's a demolisher, uh, LB-10Xs, long range, uh, long range, AC-10s for all intents and purposes, but we are going to keep pounding in uh, to this javelin, four medium lasers, committed. two of which go internal, we destroy heat sink, so Enemy mech. if and when damage. that javelin Detected. returns fire, it will be heating up a little bit faster now, and I'll take everything I can get, because we took such a beating that last mission that we need Light something damage, to Commander. relatively clean, and we have opened up that left torso, as well as the right arm, tempting is, yes, so if they move the Shadowhawk next, I wonder uh, if we wouldn't be able to move around to this side, block line of sight Location from those mechs confirmed. up on the top, and still have, okay, so our hit chances are not great, uh, great hit chance with the small laser, the AC-10 with two medium lasers, I wonder, we're not inside the minimum range, but the target has moved, and we do have one recoil penalty from firing that AC-10 last turn. Firing all weapons. And we fire it, we miss. Uh, but we do strip one evasion, and that Shadowhawk moves up. Man, those Shadowhawks are uh, deadly, deadly machines. Um, I wonder, it might have been better to fire you? first with the Blackjack firing those AC2s, but since we didn't, what we might be able to do is to jump up here. No, that's out of range of those mediums. We might be able to. Jump in behind the Shadowhawk. Taking the high road! And start opening up on its rear armor. That is a lot of heat. So we're gonna drop two mediums. We might even drop three. I don't really want to go up that high in heat. And we can start fighting through this armor relatively quickly. Oh. It is so tempting to Alpha Strike. You know what? We're going to fire two of the medium lasers and just pound right like into the back this. of that Shadowhawk. Uh, we do land a couple hits. Nothing goes internal, but couple more volleys of fire on Standing the back of Shadowhawk should be enough to take it out. In the meantime, we can move up the Vindicator. We have not the best odds, uh, not the best hit chance on that Javelin, but we've... This is the trap for, for Light Max, right? Like, you start shooting them, you realize, well, I'm almost through this armor, I'm almost through this armor, then they move. And after they've moved, your hit chances go way down, but you keep thinking, well, I'm so close, I'm so close, and you know what guys, we are so close, Targeting for an alpha strike. so we land the large, we land some of the mediums, um, there's not much armor left on the Critical hit. at all, but it was lucky enough to avoid a couple of more hits, that's a quick drop. Uh, okay, so this is why we up armor the light max, because some things will always land, a couple of those missiles do make contact, blackjack might have to start coming up here, we might have to move around, uh, these escorts and stop those vehicles because they are getting much closer to that objective than I'm comfortable. Uh, so the Blackjack can certainly move up and start to get a firing angle, although that's only once they get past into this region. This is, this is not good. Uh, this is not really going well. Uh, what I think we might do is we might go ahead and sprint this Javelin uh, all the way up here into the danger zone. High risk, high reward. Let's, we're not going to be able to fire, but we might be able to pull some fire away from our other, from our other three mechs and help them get through this morass a little bit faster. So their javelin jumped around and landed a nice hit on our rear right torso. That's exactly what those light mechs are Ready supposed to order. do. Did its job very well, but didn't quite move far enough. I so hear ya. I do want to take another shot on that Shadow Hawk. We're going, to, we're going to do that from right here. We're not even going to move, but we are going to do a precision strike. Uh, the reason being, I want that Shadowhawk moving on Initiative 2, and we're going to try and pound right into that right torso in the back. Structure exposed, but we aren't able to drill through it. Even one more medium laser hitting that mark would have done it. Uh, and the you. indicator does not have enough move to get up there. 
Standing by. Um, hmm. Okay, so here's what we can do. Our right torso armor is damaged on this mech, uh, but we should be able to withstand quite a beating on the front. So we're going to go up here, we're going to turn to try and keep that uh, fire that. javelin from getting another rear angle shot. And we're going to get right up in the face of these two mechs here. And well, we might actually ignore them because we need to start putting fire on these uh, vehicles, and we have great odds with that AC-10, so Target. let's go ahead and start digging through. It's a lot of armor we have to work through. We don't have all that much time to do it. So yep, let's go commander. back to Decker, and... Oh, man, with the Blackjack shooting in from behind on that Shadowhawk, I think the play... Well, we only have the large laser, laser within range. I think the play is to go here uh, to get a firing arc Roger on that, that javelin with some good odds. Good and burn. just see if we can't drill right through its CT, which we, we, we managed to do. And that makes our Centurion that. quite a bit safer, because the odds of either of these larger mechs being able to get completely around behind is much lower. Um, but I am really starting to get worried about those, those vehicles making it in. The Shadowhawk uh, was a smart move and protects its back. Unfortunate for us, but good maneuvering. Uh, and much as I don't like me. it when it's unfortunate movement for us, it is nice to see the AI do some good moves. And that blackjack absolutely taking a pounding uh, from the quick draw. Like I was very there. unhappy. Um, and those LBX AC 10s, I guess they are clustered, not single shot. And that is good because single shot uh, would have drilled right through most of the armor uh, on that. Fire Javelin and our Black Jack a pounding, Commander. becoming very unsteady. Let's see. So the Shadowhawk will move on round three, and because we've been targeting its back, its front is actually still mostly alive. Uh, there's nothing we can do about that for right now, unless... is that a rear angle? That might be the shot that we're looking for. If we can land those four medium lasers right into the back of that Shadowhawk, we might just be able to drill our way through, and let's see if it's if it's allowed. Nope, we're on the front. Okay, so that could have gone better, but we really need to stop these vehicles. Let's shoot at... Okay, so the Bulldog has less armor than, than the Demolisher, and we're shooting from the rear, while the front of the Demolisher has already been damaged. So let's shoot at the back of that Bulldog. We don't need to do a precision strike. We're on the back angle, so most is going to hit... Uh, concentrated on this rear, and we might actually be able to... No, we, we do have a mess. Uh, we exposed that rear structure for the Bulldog, but we aren't able to quite take that. We do have structure exposed on the Centurion, but that Shadowhawk has moved in they such a way that we should be able to completely Commander? pound him now with the Blackjack. We are going to move a little bit. Um, Affirmative. And I think we're going to use Vigilance. This will remove all of our stability damage, uh, make that Blackjack a lot safer, and our left side has taken a pounding. I wouldn't be too surprised if we have a structure exposed before the end of the mission. We can fire all but the one medium laser, and this should chew right through that rear door. Targeting enemy six. Uh, without even doing a precision strike, we do. We take off that AC-5, Critical hit. destroy the right torso and the right arm, which leaves that core uh, nice and easy to shoot. Uh, although we should still try and shoot from the back. Yes, so our Centurion, uh, the left side has been opened. So it might be down to the Vindicator and the Javelin uh, to stop those vehicles, which is a little bit nerve-wracking, but I think these two are much more lightly armored. We should be able to bore through those without too much difficulty. And the reason, well, so our right side, no, our left side, well, let's not get that flipped again. Uh, our left side is damaged, so let's move over here. Let's keep a right side facing. Um, as much as we can without exposing our back to this quick draw, and let's open up on the Shadowhawk. It's right into the front, which is as of yet mostly undamaged. But that AC-10 is able to do great damage. Uh, might have even hit the head? No, that would have taken it clean off. Looks like the small laser hit the head, uh, but we did get some damage in on this center torso, which is nice. Commander. And now we can go ahead and move up with the Vindicator. Vindicator is going to go right into the thick of things Roger. Um, and shoot at this quick draw. Well, yeah, we need to put some damage on the quick draw, and we're going to open fire with everything we have. Confirmed. Uh, just in, in an attempt to put some damage on it to make it easier for the Blackjack and the Centurion to finish the job. Uh, they are.
are getting some fire on us still from those convoys, and it's getting to the point where we might have to avoid the demolisher entirely in order to kill those vehicles inside the, the denial zone uh, before they all get there and are able to escape. The quick draw goes around the back, opens fire on the rear of the Vindicator, which is a little bit nerve-wracking, um, but the way they've maneuvered should make it pretty easy for our Vindicator to come over this way and start getting some fire, which is incredibly important. Uh, as I said Careful. when we started off this mission, right our deployments has made our objective difficult, if not impossible, to achieve. Uh, and I don't think it is impossible. We will do our utmost uh, to succeed in this mission. We're getting some wonderful salvage from it. Um, far too good, good to pass go. up. Uh, we are moving on turn four here. Quick draw is not moving until two. As tempting as it is to fire into the back of the Shadowhawk, uh, let's see, would we actually be able, we would not be able to get any sort of fire, oh we would, okay, yeah we can't pass this up, these things are too close to that end zone for us to pass up an excellent rear ankle shot, uh, the Gallant, MG's AC-10, LRM-10, uh, oh man, I am a little bit worried about that Narc Beacon uh, making it easier to shoot, but at this point we need all of the damage we can get, and wow, we are coming. So, <laughs> if we turn off everything except the AC-2s, we can get that Targeting shot. enemy backside. And it is on the rear armor, and we hit the side because, you know, our luck is just incredible here. Uh, if we go in for melee, I think that's our best option. Uh, we could shoot at the bulldog. Uh, hmm, you know what? Let's reserve. Let's see where that uh, Shadowhawk goes and where our Vindicator can hit because if we can use the Centurion Ready to order. get up around and drill right through the back of that, uh, of that Shadowhawk, we should be fine. We're, we're just unable to get the angle that I want. I want to keep a right side facing because our left side has that structure exposed, so we won't be able to get into cover. But in order to keep that right side facing, we are going to move back here and open up right into his rear and probably use a precision strike just because I don't really like the odds uh, on any of those shots all that much and we need to bore right through the back. Affirmative. We missed the AC-10. We drilled the other lasers and that pilot is down. Hostile. Shadowhawk has been taken completely out of the fight and now What's we up, can boss? more or less ignore the quick draw. Oh, that is rough. We can't get any lines of, of uh, fire on these uh, convoy vehicles, I think. So we're going to expose the Vindicator's back, which could be deadly, but we are going to sprint up there and we are going to step right on this demolisher. And counting on that extra damage to vehicles, 80 damage guaranteed instead of four chances. Um, well, not guaranteed, but four very likely uh, instances of 25 damage instead of, uh, sorry, I flipped that four unlikely chances of 25 damage scattered, or one likely chance to inflict 80. So, I took the 80. It wasn't quite enough to destroy that vehicle, and it looks like the quick draw, yep, opening fire on the Centurion, and that last vehicle in the convoy, uh, beginning to rip right through our Javelin's front armor. We're, we're lucky that they're cluster auto cannons instead of single shot. If they were single shot, we might have lost pieces uh, off of that fire Javelin by now. I'm bleeding, Which does Commander. take a head hit just from a small missile, so not really that much damage, but we do have uh, one injury marked on her now. Um, and the Demolisher, <laughs> we stepped on it from the rear, and we somehow landed that, that step on its side. Uh, so I think the best move for us right now, getting pretty low on armor, uh, let's see, Bulldog has its right side structure exposed, okay. We're going to go ahead and try and take out that Bulldog. So we're going to move up. 85% chances to hit, and it should land, if even one of them lands on that right side torso, we're right fine. We right through that right command. side and take out that vehicle. So, now we only have these two left, uh, and we might have to get a little bit tricky, because the way this works, uh, or at least the way it should work, is if those two front vehicles get here, the mission won't fail until the third does, but if we destroy this demolisher, then the mission could very well fail um, for then. That Moving said, we position. only have the large laser able to fire at either of these two front units. Man, 
these are the decisions that you don't want to have to make because we can open up pretty well on the demolisher but if that happens we could lose the mission right now uh, if these have enough movement range to get into that denial zone or if we can't stop them next turn well as we would almost certainly have one more turn with the demolishers alive that won't do us any good if we also still have to kill it. Firing at the same time. So let's open up. We do destroy that demolisher, and we should have gone after these, uh, these vehicles Enemy from the vehicle beginning. Eliminated. But, and that's easy to say until you start taking fire from several heavies at the same time. Waiting so for orders. let's go ahead and take the blackjack. See what kind of fire we can lay down. Gallant or the striker narc. I think the gallant has less movement between it and the, and the denial zone. So we're going to go ahead and see if we can... Okay, so we can only fire the two AC-2s and two medium lasers, uh, all with equal hit chance. I think now would be the time to precision strike. Uh, it doesn't really get us any better accuracy, which is curious. I thought it usually does. Uh, it doesn't seem to, and we are going to try to open up on that damaged uh, left side. The odds are slightly worse than the, than the rear, 44 as opposed to 52, but there is, well... There's only eight difference. Yeah, let's open up on that rear, have the highest chance to cluster that damage all in one place. And we do have enough to destroy that vehicle, so there's only Move one vehicle down. left. If it has enough movement range to get there this turn, Good we lose. Go. And if it doesn't, we very likely win. Although, um, the Centurion is still taking fire from that quick draw, and we're going to move farther away because I do not want the Centurion with his side, aye, side aye. with his right hand torso exposed going toe to toe with a heavy mech that still has relatively light damage. Uh, it really hasn't taken all that much fire. We are going to try and change that with the AC-10 which lands and we land the two medium lasers as well. We actually get a head hit which is very nice but it won't be enough to kill uh, vehicle ripping into our blackjack getting some structure exposed there as well. Uh, and the quick draw, oof, adding, adding even more pain onto that blackjack. This is why this blackjack okay, is not a frontline mech. We do not want him taking any of that fire, and his left torso and left arm have been exposed, the left arm almost coming completely off. Uh, so let's see if we can get the javelin up here. Should be able to get the job done, although now that I've said that, uh, the odds have gone down. Maybe you're not as superstitious as I, but yeah, structure exposed, but no kill. Uh, and I really want that Vindicator going back on that quick draw, so let's see if we can get Waiting Glitch for uh, to finish the job. We don't really have that great of a right angle shot. Hmm. Okay. This might be... yeah, that might be our best choice. So we can move here. This right should commander. increase our odds of hitting on that right hand side. And we can Precision Strike to increase that even further. 72% chance. Uh, with any luck, right this commander. should be all we need. And we do destroy that vehicle. So now all that's standing between us and victory is the remaining quick draw. So let's take the indicator and, well, let's just have some fun, shall we? So we're going to precision strike. Uh, yeah, so we're going to do that. We're going to go right for that right hand torso. Uh, I think we're close enough to the rear arc. We should have been able to get that rear arc, uh, rear line of fire, but we aren't. But we are able Solid to rip off the on that side, uh, effectively neutering. Uh, half of this quick draws armaments, although we left the LRMs, which could be a problem for our blackjack if he has another chance to fire. Uh, if he doesn't, though, and let's see if we can, still keeping that right facing, keep the Centurion safe, uh, open up another AC-10 and two moving Target lasers confirmed. in volley. I see a lot of orange, but not enough. So we likely opened his CT. He does fire the blackjack. Looks like we're very lucky. We don't lose Back up through my armor, like Commander. That. But one more round of combat, we very likely could. Yeah, he almost blows right through our left rear torso, and we just barely escape damage from that. So we're going to go ahead and sprint our way up. It doesn't really matter at this point. This pilot can't sensor lock. Um, but you know, just distract the AI a little bit Good so you can give him something else to focus on. And that CT is very damaged from the front, so we'd actually have more work to do if we go for the rear now. Uh, so we're going to go right up in front of him, turn around, and take the hot shots confirm. right into his CT. At this point, there's no reason not to precision strike. It increases our odds of hitting CT, and we drill right into it. Ah, uh, and we just barely miss. 31 left on that CT. Commander. Uh, let's see what we can do with 
too Location many shots confirmed. before he has another chance to fire, and we really want to deny him that chance as much as possible. Let's see if we can save our uh, blackjack. It's a pretty good chance on that left torso. I think we got it. Yep, and that mech is core pilot incapacitated, Enemy down. and that's the mission. Mission successful. Okay. So that's a bit of a, uh, looks like it's a bit of a string error there, but uh, we do complete that mission successfully. We were working for the pirates, absolutely abysmal payout, but the silver lining is we were able to pick up six salvage items, uh, which is actually enough to get us another quick draw. Uh, not that that first quick draw really performed all that well, but we can also take an AC-10 double plus, uh, plus two stability damage when that shot lands, and Ooh, that LRM double plus is very tempting. But let's take a little look through, see what else we have first. Sometimes there's some goodies hiding down here, like heat banks or other things. Uh, there's some LB-10X ammo, but I didn't see one in the salvage pool, and there's not. So I think let's take the LRM-10 double plus and maybe the... Well, the SRM-2 with the plus 50% crit chance is nice. I don't really tend to use that many SRM-2s, I think they're just outclassed by an SRM-6 or any sort of higher amount of damage, because an SRM-2 only does 16 damage per uh, per volley, um, so it's really just not that great. And there are better crit seekers as well, LRMs are even better crit seekers uh, for the weight, uh, I think. You know what, it is a plus, but I think we're going to go ahead and take the Shadowhawk part. Uh, it'll be valuable, so we can sell it if we get down on money, which we are from last time's repairs. Um, as well as just, you know, if we build one, it's a solid mech. Okay, so we have another quick drop built, and if I had known that we would get that, um, I might have not done the repairs that we did to this first quick draw. The problem that I have now is that I really like this fire javelin. It, it almost brings as much firepower as the quick draw, at least in terms of lasers, each having four medium lasers. Um, and it, it is a light mech, and we need that sort of fast scouting role. If we hadn't had that on our last mission, we likely wouldn't have been able to catch up uh, to those vehicles in time to prevent them from escaping. So we're caught between a bit of a rock and a hard place here. Um, it might be worth putting the Centurion away but it performed well, that AC-10 did its job, and I feel bad punishing a mech that did its, its designed duty. Um, and our Shadowhawk is pretty solid as well. But the Shadowhawk is our longest repair item right now, so what might be a good idea is putting the Shadowhawk away. Uh, we can bring it back up later when we have fewer things that need work, uh, and replacing it with a second quick draw that can not fulfill the same role, but it can definitely be a bit of a brawler if we up armor it before we send it on a mission, so it doesn't get both of its, uh, well, it doesn't get pieces ripped off in chunks like, like what happened last time. But we can't. Uh, we can't because it's undergoing repairs. Okay. That's unfortunate. So for right now, I am going to put this fire javelin in storage. Uh, that may change before the beginning of the next episode, but uh, with that in mind, thank you all for tuning in to this episode of our uh, Battletech campaign Let's Play. I hope you all enjoyed the mission, and uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next episode.